I'm Connor Northrup, and I'm joined by UFC bantamweight Brian Boom Kelleher, who takes on Cody Stamen at UFC 250 on June 6th. A very quick turnaround for Boom, and he is here now with us in his car. What's up, Brian? What's going on, man? And not much, not much. And now, like I just said, you know, quick turnaround for you uh, in in the span of a month. You know, and with all this uncertainty going on. You know, are, are you surprised that, that you were able to get two fights uh, during this time? Yeah, I was a little bit surprised. I was kind of like, you know, I, after my fight in January, I was like, when am I going to fight again? You know, what's going to happen with this whole situation? Uh, but it actually turned out to be a blessing for me. Uh, the opportunities that arise through this pandemic and, you know, a lot of fighters, they're not willing to fight right now. And a lot of fighters can't fight because they're out of the country. So things opened up for a lot of other fighters and, I'm one of those guys that, you know, I try to stay ready and, and stay willing to fight. And, you know, the UFC, uh, I'm very thankful that they're uh, making these, these last couple of fights for me at 145. You know, it makes the whole cutting the weight easier for me, mm-hmm. a little bit healthier. So it's been pretty good. Yeah. And I'm going to hit you with a big question early on, too. You know, will we see you fighting in tie-dye shorts uh, this fight? I hope so, man. I don't think we are this fight, but the more that I uh, – put big wins together i think the more uh, the potential is for that to come to fruition yeah and, and now this quick turnaround too i mean is this something that you kind of like were you planning this like before your fight with azure like you know if i win and i'm healthy i'll get right back into it or was it kind of something that happened afterwards well, i'll be honest man i kind of fell into my lap uh what happened was when i was about to sign to fight hunter I was on Twitter saying, hey, I'll, I'm down to fight any band and wait at 145. Let's get these fights in. You know, with, let's not do these drastic weight cuts during this t- time where your immune system is important. And Cody Stammer was one of the guys, surprisingly, because he ranked. He was like, hey, I'm, I, call, I call BS. Let's fight. Let's do this. And I'm like, hey, I'm down to fight, but I'm fighting Hunter. I already had that in the works. I'm like, you're next. Don't worry. I got you. And so that kind of went away. And then after my fight with Hunter, I was like, you know what? Enough of this Sean O'Malley stuff. He's fighting Eddie Wineland. Let's move forward. Let's try to close someone out with a ranking and see what happens. So I said, hey, Cody, where are you at? And he responded, and uh, the fight just kind of came together, and it fell into my lap. It was awesome. Yeah. And just going off that, too, like, with Cody, I mean, and comparing that to, you know, I know you wanted to fight with O'Malley, but, like, is this a, a better, you know, situation in a sense? Because, I mean – you know, Stamen is currently ranked, uh, you know, in the division. Yeah, this guy's number 12, man. I mean, beating this guy, especially finishing this guy, I, I feel like I'm putting myself into a potential, you know, title contendership by the end of this year. Maybe even earlier. You know, you never know what happens. They're, they're giving me fights very short notice. So, you know, I plan to be the Cowboy Cerrone of the Bantamweight division, like I said earlier in my career. Stay active, take fights on fights, and uh, put myself in a in a really good position to be, you know, in a title contention by, you know, maybe November or whatever. But uh, this is a huge fight for me. You know, at this point, I beat Stamman, and it's kind of like up to Sean O'Malley to call me out now, you know? Yeah. And, uh, like, how, how lucky do you feel, too? Because, like you just kind of mentioned before, too, you know, you are band and weight, you, you, and, and now it's going to be you're fighting two band and weights back-to-back, but, you know, at featherweight. I mean, do you feel lucky in that sense? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I feel very thankful, a lot of gratitude for the company to actually allow this and, and to understand that the circumstances are how they are, uh, and it's been amazing for me, you know, I'm not the biggest fan of weight, but with the quarantine and the different gym circumstances, my weight naturally goes up, you know, and uh, it makes it uh, a lot less stressful, and I can just focus on the fight, the weight cut won't, won't be hard at all for me, and uh, man, I, I feel strong at 45, I feel powerful, and uh, I really wish weight cuts weren't a thing in this sport. You know, I wish we could do this more often. Yeah. And I, I know, too, you actually fought at 145 when, you know, on the regional circuit, too. I mean, it, you know, do you think down the road that could be a potential move for you? Well, yeah, I have experience at 145 earlier on in my career. Um, I, to be honest with you, I think it'd be really tough to compete with these 145ers. These guys are big. I mean walking around in the 70s, the 180s, even, mm. like, my weight is naturally usually around 155, you know, when I'm in a good camp. Uh, you know, lately, it's been closer to the 160, 162 range, and it's, 
it would be really tough to get down to Bantamweight with, with the way training is right now. Uh, so once the gyms start opening up, like, I'm definitely sticking to Bantamweight. Yeah. And now you, you brought up O'Malley, too, and how, you know, you feel like if you get a win over State, you know, he'll kind of be, like, calling you out. Do you think UFC, UFC 250 is a, a great, you know, platform to make your case to fight him, too? Because, you know, say you do get the win, you know, he's going to be right there and there fighting on the same card. Yeah, this is huge, man. I think the UFC is uh, trying to maybe, uh, you know, work that out in a way where the timing is on their side. Uh, you know, I, I think I'll be fighting before him. Uh, I take out Cody Spamman. I'm number 12. Hey, uh, now you can come chase me, you know what I mean? I know you want to make a run for a title, so I think it's kind of like he has to play catch-up now, and uh, and I think uh, the UFC will even be more interested in that fight because now they have a chance to give him a ranked opponent in myself as number 12 to try to move him up, so it makes sense to me. Yeah. And how much feedback did you get from the UFC uh, regarding that O'Malley fight after uh, knocking out Azure? I heard crickets, man. I don't think they want to make that fight right now. You know, I think uh, they're being a little bit strategic with uh, who they match him up with. Uh, mm. But I think that's going to have to come to an end soon. You know, you got to start to test yourself and fight anybody they put in front of you, like myself. Here I am fighting Cody Salmon on 10 days' notice. This is real fighter shit, you know? Yeah. And, you know, you just brought up statement, too. I mean, how do you feel like you match up with a guy like that in, that's considered, you know, in the top 15 of, of the Bantamweights? Man, to me, it's all about self-belief. I, I, if you're not thinking you could beat anybody, then you're in the wrong sport. So, for me, I like the matchup. I, you know, I don't underestimate the guy in any sense. I think he's a great fighter. Uh, I think he's a, a really good wrestler. He's athletic. You know, his striking is, is he's pretty comfortable there. He switches stances. Uh, it's not an easy fight, you know, but that's not what I'm here for. I'm here to test myself, to prove to myself that I can be the best. So I'm motivated. I feel like I've had a resurgence in my career. I feel reinvigorated. I feel like the fire is lit. It, it, it's, uh, it, it's feeling amazing for me right now mentally, you know. So that's everything. I'm going in there with full 100% confidence that I can finish this guy. Yeah. And, like, what is this time like for you, too? Because, like I said, you know, before, there's a lot of uncertainty right now. And, you know, some people don't have jobs. And, you know, here you are getting two paychecks in two months. But it also seems like just as far as, like, momentum stance, I mean, your stock's really going up right now, too. So what is this time to be kind of thriving at, at a moment like this? Well, it's everything because, like you said, you know, back-to-back -back fights, very short notice, short time span. People remember what happens recent, you know, and – Recently, I knocked somebody out but in devastating fashion. I think, you know, this, a lot of hype is going on behind me. Now I'm fighting a ranked guy to put myself into an even better position. And during the pandemic, you know, while there's not many things to watch, not many sports going on, the, all eyes are on the UFC right now. So I think that's been a huge help for uh, recognition and uh, exposure. For sure, yeah. And also just from like a, I mean, just look at your social media too. I mean, you can tell you're a fight fan, you know, you're very, uh, you know, I guess, um, I don't know what the word I'm looking for, but just very into the whole kind of MMA scene and, and you know, just seemed like a real fan of the sport. You know, what's it like just, like, seeing the fights back and, like, you know, kind of having this back, especially uh, when no other sports are really going on? Well, honestly, what it is that you see is I'm married to the sport. You know, I love the sport, and, like, that's uh, that's something that it's hard to maintain. You know, you, you've been I've been in the sport for so long, 31 pro fights, sometimes uh, you feel that fire burn out and it's hard to relight it and, and, and keep that same passion and that same enthusiasm. For me, as of late, I feel like that, that reinvigoration I was talking about has been really, like, enhanced, and I feel that, that passion growing. I feel that love for the sport again, uh, and uh, that's why I'm doing so well. And I feel like, you know, being able to watch the fights for me has been a big help. You know, I, I've been bored at home, quarantine like everyone else, and kind of yeah. like, and I want to watch some fights myself. Like, that's what I love to watch. So uh, it brought back that excitement for me, and uh, not just to get in there, but to also follow the sport again. Yeah. And when you talk about that, like, reinvigoration, too, in, in your career, you know, was there was there a moment that that really kind of just, like, clicked for you? Or, you know, when did that happen? Yeah, it's good. it goes back in January, you know, when my, my job was on the line, fighting O'Day Osborne, I, I knew it was like, you know, make a break. I 
right there. Like, they're going to make it. Even take out these young, hungry prospects that are trying to make a name off of me. Um, so that was huge for me. That win really uh, gave me that confidence back. Uh, but really, I found it in the gym before that. It was more in sparring in the gym, that, that falling in love with practice again and being excited to learn and grow. And I felt that before the fight, and that was key going into that fight. And now I'm just carrying, like, with the momentum, like you said, Momentum is so fucking powerful to me. Like, I feel this, uh, I feel it in my bones, to be honest. Like, I feel it in my heart that, like, this is going to keep rolling for me. I just got to stay active and have that self-belief and I can beat anybody. Yeah. Now, I feel like when you talk to, I can, like, hear that passion in your voice, too. And, you know, one thing I also noticed on social media, too, is, I, especially on Twitter, you know, you just seem like you're very, like, motivational and, like, you know, t you talk a lot about, you know, being down and, and getting back up. Is that something you take a, a lot of pride into, especially, like, you know, being on the platform that you are, you know, there is a ch there is an opportunity here to, like, inspire a lot of people? Yeah, for sure, man. I hope to be able to inspire people that have had trials and tribulations. Like, my career is the perfect uh, layout for, you know, ups and downs and, and peaks and valleys and not just getting it the easy way, you know, uh, having to deal with potentially not knowing if you're as good as you think you are and then finding that, that back inside you, like, yeah, you know what? Like, I can be the best. I can still get through this and, and, and turn this all around and, and get back on top. You know, uh, it started with that Lineker loss. You know, I had to deal with that, and, and that was psychologically damaging to me, and I had to recover from that and put myself back in a mental space where I could be the best fighter again uh, and, and the best Brian Kelleher. So, I found that through all that, and uh, now I'm backfiring on all cylinders, and I hope that other people could take inspiration. <laughs> yeah, I, you, you broke up a little bit at the end there, though. But, uh, Brian, uh, before I let you go, a a anything that you want to add? I think you broke up a little bit there. Yeah, sorry. No, I was just saying I, I, I'm... Yeah, can you hear me now? You got me or no? Yeah, I think I got you, yeah. Sorry, sorry man. It's all right. Uh, I don't know if you can hear me. You got me? Yeah, I, I got you now. I can hear you. Yeah, no, I was just like, I was saying like through the trials and tribulations, I just hope people can take inspiration from that, you know, especially during these times, you know, a lot of uh, people are feeling down and out, you know, whether it be their business or their family or whatnot, so hopefully they can look at my story and kind of take from that and, and uh, just never quit, man, keep uh, persistent, keep focused, and, uh, you know, I really just want to say thank you to my family and my loved ones and all the people that show me true loyalty, true support. And uh, let's keep this going, man. It's a uh, 2020 vision, baby. Boom. Yeah, for sure. And uh, a anything you, you want to get off your chest uh, before I let you go, Brian? No, man, that was it. Um, that, that, that's pretty much it, man. Thank you for the time today. Yeah, hey, I, I wish you the best on June 6th. I, I hope you do get your fight with O'Malley, and uh, take care. I wish you the best. Boom. Thank you, man. All right, have a good one. You too.